Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 25th, 2020. Let's talk NBA basketball, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now understand, the scene is fluid. What I say today might not be what I believe tomorrow, right? You have stars coming down with COVID. You have stars losing a lot of weight. Djokovic, for example, Marc Gasol, for example, right? You have stars deciding not to play, either for contract reasons. Davis Burchens, who carried my fantasy basketball team this year, great three-point shooter, bigger loss for the Wizards and people realize. And Avery Bradley of the Lakers. In my opinion, Bradley has long been one of the best defenders in the National Basketball Association. Right, this goes back to his time with Boston. He was a clutch Laker on a team that needs guys who can bring defensive intensity. I don't believe that the drop down from him to J.R. Smith is a small one. I think that's a big drop, so big, that I think the loss of Avery Bradley leapfrogs the Los Angeles Clippers over the Lakers. Let's remember the Clippers were just rounding into shape. Paul George had only played 42 games. The Clippers have a much deeper roster, much deeper roster, in my opinion, than the Lakers. They're much better defensively. And understand, they have a lot of hard-nosed guys who have had very good runs in the playoffs, including, of course, Kawhi Leonard, who's been a Finals MVP multiple times. I think at this stage, the Clippers benefit greatly from not having to play the Lakers in Los Angeles, which is still a Laker town, right? The fact that they get to participate in this tournament at a neutral site helps the Clippers tremendously. I only see other than the Lakers and the Clippers, and I believe the Clippers have an edge on the Lakers, pending whatever COVID-19 problems that arise that may change the rosters. I think today's Clippers are better than the Lakers. I like the fact that Doc Rivers, the coach, has already won a ring. Right, coached multiple teams to the NBA Finals. I'm talking about got to the NBA Finals multiple years. I prefer that over the Laker coaching situation. Also, LeBron James, tremendous year, tremendous player, right? One of the all-timers in the sport. But he's in his mid-30s. And his role has changed. There isn't the continuity from prior seasons. He's now a point guard. This is new. LeBron's certainly been in his share of NBA Finals. Right? He's won his share of NBA Finals. But he has a new role this time. Just like we would wonder what's going on. If Kawhi Leonard suddenly was the point guard of the Clippers. You need to be concerned, and I know LeBron, tremendous year. He should be on the very short list of MVP candidates for the year, right? But just like if I saw Kawhi Leonard suddenly be the point guard of the Clippers, the fact that LeBron led the league in assists this year doesn't comfort me, knowing that this is his first time in the playoffs in this role especially given how thin the team is. 
There are only two other teams that I think have a realistic chance of winning the NBA title. Right? Let me talk about the controversial team first. The Houston Rockets. Folks, could there possibly be a hungrier team in the National Basketball Association? The only thing missing from James Harden's resume, from Russell Westbrook's resume, from Mike D'Antoni's resume, is an NBA title. Understand, they play an offensive style of basketball. They're going to be up and down the court. In a condensed tournament, that's going to wilt some teams. The fact that it's a bubble, given the press scrutiny that Harden and Westbrook have faced in the past, right? We keep hearing that Harden's a choker, that Harden's a flopper, that Harden needs calls. We're hearing that nobody wants to play with Westbrook. KD couldn't wait to get to the airport out of town. Right? That Westbrook is tone deaf when it comes to shooting threes. Well, now these guys are going to be in a bit of a bubble, aren't they? That Houston press, those road games, they no longer exist, right? These guys are in a bubble. It's a neutral court. They're hungry. They have the kind of up-tempo game that's gonna throw a lot of teams. They have multiple superstars who can take over the game by themselves some nights. I know Houston's record's not the best. I know they're not in the top five in the West. That's a dangerous team. Finally, the last team, talking about hunger. A team that didn't make it to the NBA Finals last year. A team that was running roughshod over the East again this year. The Milwaukee Bucks still have a lot of length, still shoot a lot of threes, still have a major MVP candidate. Giannis, right? The team feels that they let down their fans last year, even though they got close to the NBA Finals. I think in this format, a team with this length, this defense, this continuity, where the players' roles are what they've been in the past, I think the Bucks show up big time. So for me, <clears throat> there are only four teams that have a shot at the NBA title, as I see it today. Sorry, Toronto, I believe you're losing your belt. I know Denver was a two seed last year. I don't like Joker's weight loss. The team looks too young to me. I think the only four teams that have a shot are the Bucks, the Clippers, the Lakers, and the Houston Rockets. Right? That's how I'm playing it. Some of the teams that I thought would be doing better. The Boston Celtics, for example. Haven't lived up to the billing. Right, the Philadelphia 76ers haven't lived up to the billing. I'll agree, Miami is going to be difficult, but a lot of the heat game is the fact that they're in better shape than most teams. They play harder than most teams during the regular season. Right, you're going to lose a lot of that because everyone is rested right now. This isn't a situation where you hit the fourth quarter and the other team is gasping for air while the Heat are able to operate, right? Bam Adebayo is great. Their three-point shooter, 
I believe his name is Duncan Hunter, is spectacular from three. I just don't feel that they have the horses <coughs> that these other teams have. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you if you feel, and I'm sure there are many of you, if you feel that I'm overlooking a team, that there's some diamond in the rough out there who's going to benefit from this format, who's going to surprise a lot of people, who may have underachieved in the past, but now they're on center stage, right? I know there are a lot of Dallas Mavericks fans out there, for example, right? Luke is a hell of a player, but he's too young to me, right? Too young. Doesn't have the experience of a LeBron, an AD, a James Harden, a Russell Westbrook, even a Giannis, right? But if you feel that there's a different team out there that's a legitimate dark horse that might be able to rise up and beat these teams, tell us about it in the comments section of this video. Let me go one step further, too. The Clippers. A lot of casual fans are going to look at their record. A lot of casual fans are going to look at their history, right? No NBA titles. And they're going to write them off, right? They're not going to realize that Jerry West, really the LeBron of the front office, that Jerry West is running the team, right? They're not going to value the defense of people like Patrick Beverly, Harrell, others on this team, right? A lot of casual fans are going to overlook the Clippers because it's the Clippers. Don't be one of them. Looking at these teams, if I had to pick one team and say this team has the best chance at an NBA title, it would be the Clippers, in part because of their depth. In part because if I stop Leonard, if I stop George, I still have to deal with Lou Williams on offense. Right? That's how deep the team is. Right? Don't fade the Clippers. They don't have to play the Lakers in some arena where magic and all the banners uh kareem wilt uh are hanging from the ceiling worthy west right and of course the lakers would be the home team for majority of the games because the lakers were the top seed in the west when we went to the break they don't have to worry about that now right they don't Neutral court. Neutral court. You don't have the whole L.A. fan base out there. Right now it comes down to talent, defense. Proving yourself. Big shots. Right, the Clippers have the roster to pull this off. I think the Clippers have the best chance to win the NBA championship. Dare I say, I think the Milwaukee Bucks have the second best chance. We'll see what happens. That's how I see it. Clippers, Bucks, the other two teams, Lakers, Houston. Those are the four teams I give the best opportunity to win the 2020 NBA championship. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.